Hey guys. Good evening. Hoy sí funciona mi cámara, así que here I am. Just let me see if I can. Hoy, se... Hoy la vimos bien. Hoy sí, cabal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing is that I have been, you know, um, having problems with the equipment, right? And the camera was one of those things. Uh -huh. But give me one moment. I'm trying to look for a position where you can see me well. There you go. Um, just let me check something here very quickly. And I'm going to add the background. There we go. So thank you very much for joining, guys. It's 8 o'clock. Asika, welcome to your penultima clase, right? Because actually we're going to be um, finishing tomorrow, right? And I haven't checked yet, right? If all of you have already finished with your um, exercises, guys. But anyways, if you haven't, we still have today. And also we have... Um, um the review of the final exam tomorrow right so if you have any questions you can let me know as well by them so let's begin right and today is our session well today we have our session 15 it's february the 8th and we are going to continue talking about some of the important things that we left you know um aside from section number five and also, I'm going to pass the attendance. Just bear with me. I'm going to open the list. Give me one moment. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, I'm going to uh, leave it there so it loads because actually <laughs> it's a lot of information. All the lists from all the students are here. Okay. Let's look for yours. That's going to be uh, advanced three. There we go. And we're going to hide all this. Give me a moment. February. Mm. February 8th, here it is. <clears throat> okay, well, let's begin. Alba Dir Portal Diaz. Present. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present, teacher. Thank you. Eh, Ana Francisca Garcia Nieto. Eh, Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Present, teacher. Thank you. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Present. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquilla. Present. Thank you. Diego Anthony Melendez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present teacher. Thank you. Give me a moment. Um, no. Okay. Um, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. <clears throat> Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Jenny Lisette Campos Martinez. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Carlos Rodriguez Linares. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Maria Azucena Ayala Flores. Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Present. Thank you. Marta Bruce Enrique Reyes. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present. Thank you. Nady Ibis Mendez Salveño. Thank you, Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you, Rebecca Stefania Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Melendez Morales. Rodrigo Daniel Melendez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa Maria del Milagro Perez de Paz. I'm here. 
Thank you. Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Jensi Marlene Leon Lopez. And Zulma Beatriz Perez Caldanes. Present. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, so again, welcome. And thank you very much for being here. Let me take a look at here. We, start, we still have one session. Hmm. I can see that some of you have already reached, right, all the requirements for you to move to the next level. So that's very good. I congratulate you for that. Well, guys, yesterday we were talking a little bit about giving recommendations, right? And uh, we were able to practice a little bit, you know, with an exercise. And the idea here was to go ahead and put into practice the different options that we have to give recommendations and opinions whenever we think something is a good idea and whenever we consider that it's absolutely necessary. Um, we were able also to... Um, practice you know some of the phrases that we can use to offer a different different opinions right um teacher and how i mean in what way do they help me well actually they help you guys as i was sharing with you like uh, two weeks ago they help you to show that you have an advanced level um meaning that for example if you if you just say ah i think it's not a good idea or I think it's a good idea. If you use those two, that, that phrase just like that, as plain as that, you, man, you might sound like if the level that you are dealing with, it's more basic or intermediate. But if you come and you say, oh, you know what? You may have a point. However, I think that we should pass a law to, regular, to, to regulate that. So you are showing that the level that you have is between intermediate and advanced. So please keep in mind that whenever you find this type of um, phrases, right, or um, options to, you know, use um, the language in a, to a different level or to take the language to a different level, use it and take it. Um, yesterday we stopped here because we were talking about question tags. And we were reading um, some of the sentences from the conversation. And I share with you a couple of pictures through the WhatsApp group where you can see that whenever we are using tag questions, um, we need to make sure and we need to be very uh, focused right when we use them because if the sentence is affirmative, so that means that I have to use a tag question in the negative way. If the sentence is in the negative form, so I need to use a tag question that goes in the affirmative way, right? And then um, we have here the information that you can find in your manual about tag questions, right? We have the affirmative statements and the negative statements, as I was saying before, right? Here we have four examples, okay? And I think these four examples summarize like the basic tenses that we use, right, with, um, with tag questions. Now let's go ahead and open here a Look the notas, <laughs> my little board. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So in the affirmative statement, right, we have health insurance is really expensive, isn't it? Right. So here, the main verb is the verb to be, right? And the verb to be in the uh, present simple form. Okay. Present simple form which is is and are, right? So I know that the negative form for is is going to be isn't, right? So um, that's the reason why I switch is uh, to isn't in the tag question. Now, what happens with the verb be always in the uh, present simple form, but if it's plural? Well, I have are, and I know that if I want to make that negative, I'm going to use addend, okay? So here we have the two uh, forms and you just switch, okay? So there are lots of criminals in the city, aren't there? 
Okay, now here, guys, please make sure that you are using the structure. Now here, in this sentence, right? This sentence over here, it's in present simple, okay? This one is in present simple, but the structure is different. It's not the verb be itself. Como así, teacher? Here, I'm using there is and there are, okay? So it's not the same, right? It's not the same because actually, um, ah, okay, Sandra, Patricia, thank you for letting me know. No worries, okay? And so the structure is there is and there are, right? And I know that if this, this becomes a question, I need to say are there, is there, is there a chair where I can sit? Is there a glass of water or a bottle of water in the fridge, right? So if I'm using there is and there are, I need to make sure that that's what I include in the question tag. Like in here, there are lots of criminals in the city, aren't there? Graffiti makes everything look ugly. Okay. So here, guys, we are talking about a different structure. We're talking about present simple of other verbs. Oops, other verbs. Okay, como así, teacher. Present simple, we have it in two different ways. Okay, we have the present simple of the verb be, and we have the present simple of other verbs. As you can remember from level one, if you are here since you're not the very beginning, in level one, the very first thing that we study is verb B, okay? And that's gonna be the present simple of verb B. But later, once you master the use of verb B, we teach present simple of other verbs. And here, guys, is where don't, doesn't, do, and does come into play, okay? Uh, why, teacher? Well, because in present simple, we need, uh, we need a lot of help. Let's put it like that, okay? With the present simple form or with the verb be, it, this is the independent guy, independent guy. Como así, teacher, el chico independiente, yes. Why? Because the verb be can be positive, negative, and question form. El solito puede convertirse en afirmativo, negativo, y pregunta. But here, the present simple of other verbs, we need a lot of help. Okay, we need a lot of help. <laughs> going to put it like this. We need a lot of help. Entonces, como necesitamos mucha ayuda, ahí es donde viene don't, doesn't, do, and does. Okay? Entonces, that's why uh, sometimes it's a little bit, you know, uh, confusing. Now, if I have graffiti makes everything. So, if I want to say that in a negative way, I will have to use the negative form. But, um, for example, I can say, gra well, let's see, graffiti makes everything looks ugly, right? So this is, the, this is just a sentence. No estoy hablando de la tag question. Solo quiero hacer una comparación de la oración, okay? So that's going to be the, the, the affirmative sentence. Pero, ¿cómo hago yo para allá la negativa? Well, all what I have to do is to... Number one, delete the letter S from the verb because I don't need it. And I add the auxiliary negative form, doesn't, right, to make it negative. Graffiti doesn't make everything looks ugly, right? So a different opinion. Y perdón, chicos, que veo hacia el lado, pero es que yo tengo dos, tengo la computadora y tengo el monitor, entonces estoy viendo el, la pantalla donde les estoy explicando ahorita, okay? No es que no les esté viendo ustedes, I'm here. Um, then uh, over here, right, it says graffiti doesn't make everything look look ugly. Okay, so acá esto, verdad, es la forma negativa. So when I ask the question, I cannot say it, right? Graffiti looks, I mean, graffiti makes everything looks ugly. Y yo vengo y agrego la forma negativa. Oops, sorry. Doesn't it? 
right? ¿Verdad? Okay. Entonces, the same happens with should, the same happens with um, can't, right? All what we have to do is to switch. Now, should, right? With should, it's kind of similar, right? Colleges should provide daycare. Shouldn't they? <laughs> bueno, está debatible eso, ¿verdad? Colleges should provide daycare. Shouldn't they? So colleges, I think, um, yeah, college, colleges, uh -huh. those are like, um, creo que son como institutos, siempre universidades, right? But let's see, let's see. What's the difference? What's the difference between university and college? Porque college no es colegio, ¿verdad? College es ya una institución superior. A ver. Mm, okay, here we have. It says colleges and universities primarily differ in program offerings and degree types. The university refers to larger institutions offering both undergraduate and graduate programs. College refers to community colleges, technical schools. Ah, okay. Esto sería más o menos como, como un instituto. Uh -huh. So this is the difference, right, between um, universities and colleges, right? So university refers to a larger institution offering both undergraduate and graduate programs, right? And college refers to community colleges, right? Technical schools and liberal art colleges, right? I think it's colleges, okay? So that's the difference. So he, colleges, they said, should provide daycare. Shouldn't they? What do you think? <laughs> then, um, since this one is in the affirmative way, so the... Um, the model goes in the negative form in the question tag. Over here, we have the same situation, pero aquí es lo contrario, ¿verdad? Aquí son negativas. So, child care isn't cheap, is it? <laughs> Actually, no, it is not, right? If you pay child care in El Salvador, um, you're paying around or between 80 and, well, at a child, uh, child, what's the name of it? Um, child care uh -huh, school between 80 and 200 dollars right and you have the second option to pay you know for a nanny to take care of your um, child but that's even more expensive and the only difference is that kids are not learning that much at home right so it's better you know probably to have them in a kindergarten right so they can learn new things there aren't enough police there aren't enough police. Are there? Right? Are there? People don't care about our city. Do they? Right? So in this case, um, si ustedes se fijan, chicos, solamente en la parte de las negativas es donde yo uso, si yo estoy usando el um, the auxiliary. If I use the auxiliary, so... At the end, in the question tag, the auxiliary has to be there, but in the positive form. Like in this case, people don't care about our city. Porque, en serio, ¿cuál utilizo? ¿verdad? Si yo veo don't, entonces, ¿cuál uso? Si no puedo usar el verbo en, en sí, care, no puedo usar don't. Entonces, la única opción que me queda es el auxiliar. The auxiliary do, right? Do they? Now, same with models. Los models siempre van a ser iguales, ¿verdad? Si es afirmativo, acaba negativo. Si es negativo, acaba afirmativo. You can't find affordable childcare, can you? Right? Entonces, that is a little bit of, you know, those tenses, right, that we need to uh, keep in mind when we are using the question tag. So it says, add tag questions to these statements, then compare with a partner. Okay, so let's go ahead, guys, and take a look right at the sentences. And I'm going to give you four minutes, okay, four minutes for you to, no, see, four minutes for you to think about uh, the question tag that you can use. Voy a abrir un timer aquí, and we're going to give you four minutes. It's going to be this one, four minutes and 30 seconds, bye. <laughs> Four minutes and 30 seconds. 
¿verdad? Y antes de darle clic a comenzar, do you have any questions? ¿Hay alguna pregunta, alguna duda? Questions? No. Okay. So let's go ahead and work. And in four minutes and 30 seconds, we will be checking the answers. There we go. Okay, guys, just one more minute and then we check the answers. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know so I can clarify your doubts. Teacher, I have a question. Yes, tell me. When we use people, uh, I confuse if use does or don't. Mm, very good because question. People, mm -hmm. Tell me. Because people is uh, okay. The people is. is it's a, it's a lot of, of uh, persons, mm -hmm. but people is a unknown, um, uncountable. Um, 
Okay. Um, actually, they're not. And that's a very good question, Eliud. Thank you very much. Um, in English, we have something that is called, well, in English and in Spanish, actually, we have something that is called uh, collective nouns. Okay. Um, collective nouns. Oh, give me a second. I'm going to turn off this. But it's kind of similar to the uh, to this word, you know, people, because people actually it's countable. Whenever we use the word people, we use verb be are. So people are very happy because the thing is that it is countable because you can count people. You can say one people, two people, three people, four people, right? So if it's plural, because actually that's a plural noun, it's a plural noun. So in this case, we are going to use don't for negative questions. I mean, for negative sentences and do for the questions, right? So another word, and I compare it with this. And let me open here my, my fact. Why important? <laughs> um, for example, people, it's a plural noun, right? It's a plural noun. So therefore, you're going to use don't. And for questions, do. Okay. Now, family. Family, it's different. Family is a singular noun. Okay. Therefore, you're going to use doesn't for negative sentences, and you're going to use does for questions. Right. So, in this case, this is just a comparison for you to see that even though people, it's, you know, making reference of probably an unknown number of persons that is going to be treated as a as a plural noun on the other hand when we have family family it's a singular noun so family means how many families do you have i have one family i come from one family so in that case we treat the word family as a singular noun by using dozen for negative statements and does for questions I don't know if I answered your question. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and check the answers for this exercise. And let me go ahead and open this here because we're going to use it. I'm going to go down and we're going to begin with number one. So if you want to participate, you can raise your hand, right? So we can avoid having people talking over the rest, right? And okay, thank you, Sulma. Can you read the first one? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you can escape adversity nowadays, can you? Mm -hmm. Very good, can you, right? Okay, and it's advertising, advertising, right? Okay, you can't get advertising nowadays. Thank you, Jose Francisco. Number two. There aren't enough gun control laws. Are there? Mm -hmm. Very good, are there? Excellent. Very good, are there? The next one, Rafael. Noise population is a major problem here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Correct, isn't it? Oops, isn't it, right? Thank you so much. Noise pollution, right? Well, that's a problem, especially in busy cities, okay? What about number four, volunteer for number four? Me, me, go, teacher. Go ahead, Jenny. Uh, there are more and more homeless people on the street. Aren't, aren't there? Very good, right? Out in there, that's correct. Excellent, thank you so much. Then the next one, another volunteer for number five. Number five, thank you, Jency. Number five. Number five. Mm -hmm. um, only 42. You have there only four. Are... Uh -huh. uh, Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, because actually we have already uh, gotten, I mean, we have already answered that with the help of Jenny. So it's added there, right? So what about number five? Any volunteer that would like to help me with number five? Me, teacher. Go ahead. 
uh, that the taxes, the sales taxes should be lower, lower. Shouldn't lower. Be? Very good. Shouldn't be. Boy, Claudia, Marcela. So exactly, it, the sales tax should be lowered. Remember, right? Lowered mm -hmm. uh -huh, with the sound. Shouldn't it? Very good. Shouldn't it? Claudia, Marcela, please, can you help me with the next one? It isn't easy to save money these days, is it? Is it, right? Yeah, definitely. It's not easy, right? Is it? Very good. Then number seven. <clears throat> Anyone that can help me with number seven? Eh, mi teacher es solo que el blog de notas está para la... Ah, la I'm sorry. There you go. Con razón, pero de todas así, no mm. lo deja ver la mm. <laughs> Number seven. Mm -hmm. uh, Down singing in hurting the economy. Isn't it it? Mm -hmm. Okay, downsizing, right? Uh, downsizing. Downsizing, uh -huh. isn't it? Very good. Okay, oops. So downsizing is hurting the economy, right? Isn't it? Very good. And number eight, the last one, number eight. <clears throat> Go ahead. Dina. The city doesn't do enough for stray animals, does it? Mm -hmm. Very good. Does it? Excellent. There we go, right? So uh, all we have to do is to really, really focus on the tense or the auxiliaries or models that we're using and just, you know, go at the end and build our question tag on the opposite of that, okay? Excellent. Uh, well, I don't know if you have questions, guys, about this um, particular topic. Questions? Okay, very good. If there are no more questions, I'm going to move to the next uh, part. Now, there is something here, guys. Um, oh, well, you are going to prepare some of your uh, sentences, but we will do that later. First, I would like to go to this section, this particular section here about pronunciation. I don't know, guys, if you remembered um, in level, I think it's intermediate, if I'm not mistaken, but um, whenever you, well, actually, those are basic levels. Um, there is a section where we study the uh, falling and um, rising intonation. Como así, teacher. Um, you know, whenever we talk, and whenever we ask questions, right, um, there is a uh, falling intonation or sometimes it rises, right? So it depends. Alguna vez es eh, elevado, otra, otra vez es, pues, el cae esa entonación, right? Uh, what happens with question tags? Well, the intonation in question tags, it's a little bit different because we use falling intonation. ¿Qué quiere decir? That we close the question, you know, um, not raising that intonation, something like ethnic conflict, it's a terrible problem, isn't it? So I don't say isn't it, right? No, I don't use rising intonation. I use falling intonation, right? They should make guns illegal, shouldn't they? So, cierro la question tag con una, con una entonación que cae, right? En ningún momento, pues, le doy ese st stress o esa, esa entonación fuerte al final, porque es una falling intonation, right? So, this is just something important to remember, right? Because um, whenever we are asking them, uh, we have to make sure that we are applying the proper intonation to this, okay? Okay, now about the uh, the questions, okay, uh, question tags. I would like you to um, 
give me examples, okay? Here you have one example. It says, the food in the cafeteria is terrible, isn't it, right? And then there's an answer. Yes, it is. They should get a new cook. On the other hand, I like hamburgers because blah, 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 right? But right now, guys, what I want you to do is everyone, please, everyone write two question tags, but, you know, with real situations. Algo que usted preguntaría. Don't forget something important. ¿Se acuerdan? There is something here that we mentioned. I think it was, no, no estaba acá. Eh, whenever I use the question tags, es importante mencionar el por qué los estoy usando. Y no sé si ustedes recuerdan que mencionábamos que eh, los usamos para cuando nosotros queremos confirmar. I want to confirm. I want to listen to the other person's approval. Quiero escuchar que esa persona esté de acuerdo conmigo. ¿Verdad? Por eso es que hacemos las question tags. En inglés y en español. Right? That's the reason why. So, uh, let's go ahead and write down two two question tags about real life situations, ¿ok? Y yo me voy a encargar de contestarlas como están ahí en, la, en el ejemplo, right? I will answer, ¿ok? To your question tag. Usted me va a preguntar a mí, todos me van a preguntar a mí y yo soy la que les va a responder, ¿ok? Así que let's work in two question tags about real life situations and I'm going to give you, um, let's see, Three minutes and 30 seconds, okay? And they begin right now. Ahorita ya comenzaron sus tres minutitos y 30 segundos, okay? Sorry, I was talking on mute. Thank you, Jose Francisco. Let's see. The teacher has a little girl. Does she? Right, okay. Okay, so in this case, let's go ahead and take the first one. Let's analyze it. I'm going to remove all of this. So what do you think is the portion that I need to modify and why. The teacher has a little girl, does she? What do you think it's what we need to change in the question tag? Doesn't she? Very good, exactly. So as you can see, the sentence is in the affirmative form. Para los demás, si gustan así tal cual lo José Francisco hizo, me la, lo pueden pegar ahí en el, en el chat, okay? So the teacher has a little girl, doesn't she? Muy bien. Doesn't she? Right? Very good. Then um, we have the second one. Y en este caso, José Francisco está utilizando otra opción que es right, ¿ok? ¿Y significa lo mismo, teacher? Sí, significa lo mismo, ¿ok? Uh, en este caso, pues, significa lo mismo, solo que es de una forma diferente. Ahora bien, eh, no diría yo que hay una diferencia entre usar el uno y el otro con respecto al nivel, because actually both are useful, both are used, right? So the teacher enjoys um, to teach, right? To teach 
class classes right right <laughs> the teacher enjoys to teach classes or to teach english classes right okay english classes oops right or in este caso si quisiéramos tener la misma oración solo que con question tag verdad diríamos the teacher enjoys right to teach english classes cuál sería la opción acá doesn't she? Doesn't she? Right. Very good. Excellent. Okay. And both options are correct as well. Then we have the hospital. It's over there. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Very good. Isn't it? Right. Sorry. Yo lo copié mal. So the hospital, it's over there. Isn't it? Then our English class should be more extens extensive. Does not it mm -hmm. okay ¿Qué, qué tendríamos que modificar en esta our english classes should be more extensive does not it what do you think it's the element that we need the element that we need to change from this one anyone sure Ok, y en este caso tendríamos que borrar el doesn't it porque no estamos usando present simple, sino que estamos usando un modal verb, right? Entonces, our English class should be more extensive. En este caso, extensive creo que no es la palabra, sino intensive. Intensive, right? And here we change to shouldn't, shouldn't it. ¿Por qué, teacher? ¿Por qué it? Porque estamos hablando de English class. English class es el it. Right? Okay. Our English class should be more intensive. Shouldn't it? Right? Very good. Now, let's continue here. Um, the security in the country, it's amazing. Ah, ok. Muy bien. Aquí, ¿qué es lo que tendríamos que cambiar en esta oración? En esta question tag. Veamos, the security in the country is amazing. Is it? Isn't it? Muy bien. Correct. Isn't? Oops, sorry. Isn't it? Very good. Um, then we have, nowadays, young people are more liberal. Are not they? Mm -hmm. Very good. So, una cosa, chicos, eh, en las question tags generalmente no vamos a encontrar las formas, las formas eh, full forms. Generalmente vamos a encontrar siempre las contractions, ¿ok? So, nowadays, young people are more liberal. Aren't they? Muy bien. Then we have violence in El Salvador has decreased a lot. Well, I'm going to copy the, um, the sentences here. The questions, I'm sorry. Let's see, because I have more. Violence in El Salvador has decreased a lot. Hasn't it? Muy bien. Tenemos present perfect. Y pues usamos el auxiliar también en la question tag. Hasn't it? You were doing your homework. Me imagino, ¿verdad? You were doing your homework, weren't you? Muy bien. Muy bien, excelente. Then, let's see what else do we have. This is the public transportation in San Salvador is terrible, right? <laughs> okay, sí, también. Mm -hmm. the, the, the public transportation in San Salvador is terrible, right? So the question tag would be, the public transportation in El Salvador is terrible, isn't it? Right? <laughs> right? Muy bien. Then the next one, let's see. Vamos a ver siguiente. When I finish a new level in the English course, I should receive a diploma. Shouldn't I? Mm -hmm. When I finish, uh -huh, when I finish, when I finish a another, porque no es un nuevo, ¿verdad? sino que when I finish a level, uh -huh. a level in the English program, program, I should receive a diploma, 
shouldn't I? Muy bien, correct, excellent. Then eating junk food is a bad habit. Isn't it? Muy bien, that's correct. Um, the teacher speaks very fluently. Doesn't she? Very good, that's correct, okay? So you already, oh, well, here, nada más, ¿verdad? So it's just a comma, and then this one is a, um, in lowercase. The teacher speaks very fluently, doesn't she? Thank you. Okay, we're working on that. Seguimos trabajando en eso. Okay, so, yeah, guys, very good. I think the topic is very clear, right? And I like the fact that you are participating, right, in the, uh, in the activity. Okay, now... Um, I want you also to um, to think, you know, about different options that um, we can use, you know, to um, to give our opinions. Because actually, this particular unit, which is unit number fourteen, I think. Let me check. Yeah, grammar focus. Yeah, there should be a lot in unit number fifteen. It gives you, you know, the option for you to learn things about um, about opinions. And if you if you see, I'm going to share it with you. Se lo voy a compartir acá para que veamos. Eh, yo sé que mañana terminamos, pero chicos, si usted puede seguir revisando el manual, do it. Because actually it has a lot of info. Eh, this unit, the one that we started, unit number 15, right? Um, it has vocabulary that uh, we can uh, read, right? Um, also here, guys, we have another thing I'm going to point it out. Let's see, this one. You can use also these um, three, op um, it, well, three options of a verb, porque el verbo es el mismo. Por ejemplo, cuando yo digo, I strongly agree, es que estoy completamente de acuerdo. Uh, here we have some options, right? Cyclist. Cyclists should be required to wear a helmet. Strongly agree, somewhat agree, and disagree. Okay, this is when I say I strongly agree. Lo que estoy diciendo es que yo estoy de acuerdo, estoy completamente de acuerdo. Si yo digo somewhat agree, quiere decir que yo estoy De acuerdo, pero no completamente, right? Es como somewhat es algo, ¿verdad? Y luego disagree cuando usted está en desacuerdo. I disagree, right? So, for example, here we have cyclists should be required to wear a helmet. In my case, I strongly agree, right? I strongly agree. So, pet owners shouldn't be allowed to walk dogs without a leash, People ought to be required to end parties at midnight. Something has to has got to be done to stop littering. People mustn't be permitted to park motorcycles on the sidewalks. Laws must be passed to control the noise from car alarms. Drivers should only be permitted to honk their horn in case of an emergency. So, guys, did, do you know all the vocabulary words from uh, these sentences? Or do you have any questions? Questions about the vocabulary words? To honk is like a pitar. Yes, correct. Uh -huh. And horn is la bocina, ¿verdad? Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anyone else? You can use this, um, you know, permit. Permit is a verb, es el verbo, ¿verdad? Permitir. So you can use it like I am, or people, you know, are permitted to do this and to do that, right? So permit, permitted, right? So um, these three phrases also are very useful. Let me erase all my drawings here. There we go. So we, um, you know, um, practice a little bit of giving recommendations about giving your opinions, right? And here we have um, a listening that in my case, I don't have the listening option, but here we have three different situations. People talking loudly on cell phones in restaurants, car alarms going off at night, 
and telemarketing salespeople call in too often, right? So what solutions do you suggest? It asks, right? So what solutions do you suggest, guys? For the first situation, people talking loudly on cell phones in restaurants. Do you like that? And what do you think should be done? ¿Qué debería hacerse, right? What do you think should be done to avoid this type of situations, right? So any any um, opinion, any opinion on this particular topic? No? Okay, thank you, Elio. Tell me. I think <clears throat> that uh, re the restaurant must have rules written on the wall or in a, a special place in a way that people don't talk loud. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not it, it, it like a recommendation. Okay, very good. Yes, actually you used one of the options, right? In this case, you said must have, right? So restaurants must have, right, a set of rules stuck on the wall, right? So they can stock them on the wall and once you get to the place, you can read them, right? You, you're able to know the rules of the game, right? Because actually that's important, right? It's important in your life. It's important in your job, in your relationships to set the rules. Otherwise, you know, uh, you, you are not setting your boundaries. You're not setting your limits. Okay, thank you so much. What about this one? Car alarms going off at night. What do you think about that one, guys? Have you had any bad experience with alarms going off at night? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, thank you, Claudia Marcela. Tell me. I think there are a reason for they have uh, an alarm. Maybe there are uh, teeth, and it's important that the alarm uh, alarmed the owners. So I don't know. Maybe if somewhat agree with it with. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Very good. Um, okay, that, that's it. This one, this one? Somewhat agree. Ah, yeah, yeah, Some, somewhat agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I know good. that it's annoyed when I fall asleep and suddenly I, there are no noise in it outside. But it's very important that the owner knows they are a thief. Okay, I definitely agree. So in that case, I can say something like, um, you may have a point, actually, you may have a point. However, I think that if you live in a place where uh, probably, well, that is not safe, right? And if you have a car that has an alarm, that you have your key handy, right? Or that you have a way to turn it off, right? So I think that's important. And as uh, as Claudia was saying, right, the reason why the person has the alarm is because that person, you know, is protecting his or her car, right? From thieves. Okay, very good. I like that. So what about, what about, I know que lo hice. Isa. What about telemarketing salespeople calling too often, guys? What do you think about this? What should be done? Do you like to receive calls from time to time from banks, from insurance companies, from everywhere? So what do you think about this one? Any volunteer? Han venido bien callados hoy. You are very quiet today. So any volunteer? What do you think about this one? Do you like it? Do you agree? Do you disagree? What do you think should be done? 
No one? Okay, well, no worries. It's okay if you don't want to answer. That's totally fine. Now, what I can say is that in a way I disagree because sometimes they offer good products, right? Probably what I don't like is that when you receive a call from them and you say no, they keep on you know calling and they insist on the same thing even though you have already said no, right? So that's one of the things that I don't like. So what I think should be done is that um, companies, right? I'm going to use one of these. Um, companies mustn't be permitted to contact, you know, people more than twice in a row. Like, for example, if the person says no, leave it like that. Así lo dejamos y hasta ahí, ¿verdad? We don't keep on calling. And I think also uh, companies um, should be required, right? Companies should be required to, okay, ask people if they want to continue receiving calls. Because it's like, um, you know, if, if a bank contacts you and you say, no, thank you. You know, the product is very interesting, but right now I don't want it. And you are like, mm, uh, thank you very much, but no. And then one week later, you receive another call from the same bank offering the same product. And it's like, oh my goodness, I already told them I don't want it, right? So this is, what else? Um, I think, companies shouldn't be allowed to advertise their products, right, um, to the same people more than twice, more than two times, okay? I think companies ought to be required to provide um, real information about the products because sometimes they offer you and they want to give you, um, you know, uh, everything they promise you, right? Uh, everything, but when you say, okay, está bien, voy a tomarlo, ¿verdad? voy a tomar el producto, y después resulta que no es así. ¿verdad? Entonces, companies ought to be required to provide real information about the product, right? What else? Um, companies, let me see, probably that one, ESA, uh -huh. laws mu must be passed to control the marketing and advertising, you know, departments in every company. I'm just inventing, right? But the idea is for you to put them into uh, into practice, right? So, solo de una. If you see de esta, sacamos pues varias oraciones, verdad, about giving recommendations. So, guys, um, because of the time, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to move to the attendance. Okay. Este, ya pues ya mañana finalmente ustedes pasan este nivel, así que listos ahí, ¿verdad? Con cualquier cosa que ustedes tengan pendiente. Super happy for you. La verdad es que no es fácil, ¿verdad? Yo sé que están cansados algunos de ustedes. Eh, a veces uno solo quisiera llegar a descansar, pero admiro de verdad el esfuerzo que muchos de ustedes están haciendo. Los felicito, ¿verdad? Y pues ya mañana terminamos y, y, y vamos a continuar con el próximo, pero lo importante es que vayamos paso a paso. So let me go ahead and pass the attendance right now. Alba Dir Portal Díaz. Here, teacher. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Here, teacher. Thank you, Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Eh, Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Here. Thank teacher you. present, Carlos González. Okay, Carlos, Carlos thank Claudia. you so much. Ahorita, ahí está. Eh, Claudia Marcela Linares Urquilla. Here. Thank you. Diego Antonio Meléndez Mayen. Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you very much, teacher. You're welcome. Classes. 
Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Anytime. Eh, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Here. Thank you. Jenny Lisette Campos Martinez. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you. Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you. Okay, Anthony, ahorita le pongo aquí. Dio Anthony. Eh, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present teacher. Thank you. María Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Present. Thank you. Um, Marta Ruth Enrique Reyes. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher, thank you for all. Oh, you're welcome. Escucha Marta y escucha Marvin, thank you. Uh, Nady Ibis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you. Rebeca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you. Uh, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you, también Marta, sí, ya le agregué aquí Marta Ruth. Thank you and thank you, Rodrigo. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present teacher. Thank you, Jensi Marlene León López. And Zulma Beatriz Pérez Galdames. I'm here. Thank you so much. Que se me hizo Jensi, yo la vi. Quiero ver la lista. Ver. Eh, quizás se le desconectó. Bueno. So, guys, um, thank you very much for being here. So, let's meet tomorrow. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Okay. So, have a good night and see you by then. Bye bye, guys. Good bye. night, teacher. Goodbye. Good night, teacher. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye, guys.